Hi, my name is Rithu Graywall. I'm the principal investigator for this project on utilizing telemedicine to coordinate HIV care in an urban community. Um, and we're located at UF Health in Jacksonville, Florida in the United States. Our overview for the project, this was a three-year project that started in 2017 in coordination with the Centers for Disease Control, UF Health Jacksonville, Health HIV, which is an organization in Washington, DC, and our community-based organizations who I'll mention later on. The first year of this project was uh, pretty much spent in planning. That was buying the uh, technology that was needed, developing our standard operating procedures, doing training for staff, and uh, considering our marketing approach. Years two and three were spent in implementation, data collection, um, and focus groups. So what's the problem with current HIV care? There's the stigma at being seen at an HIV clinic, access to transport issues, wait and visit time um, that, that could be, um, and then that translates into lost income and missed work. There's the daily caseload, a full schedule for providers, limited time for complex care, and overutilization of emergency care. So we know that telemedicine is effective in rural areas where HIV specialists are limited, but can it work in an urban setting too? So how our project works, um, we offer care to patients with HIV to UF Cares, which is our HIV clinic, and also through um, UF Community Health and Family Medicine, where we provide HIV care. Um, patients who had their own devices could access the program from anywhere. Um, though for those who didn't have their own devices like smartphones or iPads, um, they could go to any of our family medicine clinics to, to um, complete their um, visits or to one of our community-based organizations. So our project goals were to tailor our existing telemedicine program for patients with HIV in an urban setting and specifically targeting minority patients with HIV. Our goal was to have at least 200 unique patients with HIV access their care through telemedicine and both medical care and ancillary services. So these are things like pharmacy, case management. Some of the other outcomes that we looked at were viral load stability, patient and provider attitudes towards telemedicine, and we're currently conducting a cost analysis of this telemedicine program. So this was a multi-department project um, in conjunction with the CDC and our community partners, which were Nassau County Health Department, uh, River Region Health Services, Jasmine, which is a um, youth organization for um, folks with HIV, as well as folks who are um, LGBTQ, and North Florida AIDS Network. And then Health HIV helped us with a lot of the marketing uh, for Washington, DC. And then of course, UF Cares and our family medicine department. So this is some of the infrastructure. You can see that we have, um, we had to purchase some extra monitors so that we could have the patient charts up in one and then the patient video on the other, webcams, headsets. These were all things that were bought to help uh, get ready for the project. There was a lot of training to get our staff and providers ready uh, to provide telemedicine for HIV. So there was a didactic portion that was completed on their own. Um, there was simulation with our telemedicine educator where we walked through one, uh, an example of a telemedicine visit. There was the actual experiential of uh, conducting a real visit. And then following that, there was a debrief with the telemedicine educator um, evaluating it and further training if needed. You can see here, there was quite a bit of marketing done. Um, at the bottom, you'll see that there are like the number of patients per month as far as visits that were conducted. Um, obviously, you'll see the spike in COVID-19 in March of 2020 when that occurred. Um, but there was a lot of marketing that went in. These were things like billboards and patient flyers and, and all sorts of different materials that were made, including radio ads and TV ads. So these are some examples of some of the marketed materials that were made that were put up in patient rooms um, and, and also handed to patients. Um, there was also patient education materials developed. So this included some flyers on how to use um, the technology to access their virtual visits, um, as well as some easy to use um, YouTube videos that were, that were created. 
So when the pandemic hit, um, there was obviously a rapid increase in patient demand to receive all healthcare through telehealth, um, including things like psychiatry, dietary, case management, research, pharmacy, of, and of course the medical visits as well with the physicians. Um, and we were in a really good place to be able to offer this care because we had already started doing this prior to the pandemic. So our preliminary results, um, once the project wrapped up in September of 2020, we had completed a total of 616 telemedicine visits for patients with HIV. And, and that was a total of 368 unique patients. And that's about uh, just under 50% of all patients with HIV who were seen at UF Health had a telehealth visit, which is great. And you can see below the numbers for all of the different ancillary services. So, um, some of the challenges that we encountered were with provider engagement. Obviously, this change in, in telehealth um, is associated with burnout because of the fast pace of the clinic um, and having to change um, how they conducted their visits. Um, and there was some extra um, documentation requirements that are required for telemedicine, so having to put those in. So how we combated that was through additional training and support for our providers. We also implemented a virtual visit navigator. This was a person who was in the HIV clinic that helped recruit patients, um, who helped get them set up for their visits, um, and also served as a tech support person during um, the visit. So if there was issues, they could help troubleshoot, um, as well as adapting clinic workflow. So we realized that, especially in the beginning, as providers were getting used to doing telemedicine, it was easier to um, do some of the visits sort of stacked either in the beginning of the day or right before the middle of the day, like before lunchtime or at the end of the day, um, seemed to work well versus just sprinkling them throughout the clinic uh, schedule. So when we interviewed patients afterwards about their telemedicine experience, some of the things that we expected to find and heard was that, of course, telemedicine removed the transportation barrier, eliminated the need for childcare, and was reported as more convenient. Some of the things that we didn't anticipate that they reported was that it minimized stigma. They no longer had to go into an HIV clinic. Um, they also mentioned that it increased their privacy. And really, they felt that telemedicine enhanced patient and provider communication, which is great. Some of the other benefits of telemedicine was that they had increased uh, access to their medical records and labs. Um, it reduced their overall health system navigation because they were doing it all virtually. And of course, during the pandemic, reduced their risk for um, contracting COVID-19. So lessons learned um, were lots, but overall, we just learned that you keep trying and if, if things don't work out, you find a different way and eventually you will get to success. Um, and change is definitely possible in your organization as well. I wanna thank you for your time.